Hi again. I want to do today part two on my series of governments and authorities. We look at a biblical view of governments and authorities. Last week you saw that we pointed out how the authorities and the governments mentioned in Romans 13 were the authorities and governments of the church and not the authorities and governments of the world. God did not set the authorities of the world in place. So we're going to continue to illustrate that more in this part two. And I'm going to show you how there's no doubt about this. This is just a very simple Bible fact that God did not set the governments and authorities of this world in place. He set the governments and authorities of the church in place. So starting again with Romans 13, everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. We established in last week's video that these uh, authorities, these governing authorities, are in the church. He's talking to the church. This was written to the church, and he's talking to the church. And that's why he can confidently say these, these authorities have been established by God, because Paul himself is the one who set them in place. He's the one who set the authorities in the church. And, of course, we know that the governments of the world were not established by God. We know that Satan is the God of this world. And the kingdoms of this world in their splendor belong to Satan, and he can give them to whoever he wants, according to Luke chapter 4, what we read last week. So let's look at this a little bit further. Let's look at Revelation chapter 2, we look at verse 10. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you. And you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. Now, notice here that the devil will put you in prison. And it actually says something completely different. If we look at the King James, it says, Behold, the devil will cast some of you into prison that you may be tried. Put on trial, in other words. So it's not even testing, really. It's not even Satan testing them. He's, he wants them to be put on trial. Satan's not interested in testing people. Satan wants to destroy. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so he wanted to try these believers. And so he has them cast into prison. Now, how can the devil have people cast into prison? Obviously, the devil's behind the people who cast the people into prison. The ones who cast the believers into prison were being used by the devil. Well, that would be government, wouldn't it? That would be government. So we know that Satan, once again, and this proves that Satan is behind the government forces. He's the one who gets believers thrown in prison. Prison. Thrown into prison. And you notice that God gives these believers hope. He says, okay, this is going to happen. He gives them the warning that the, the devil's going to do this. Then he says, you will have tribulation for 10 days. So, so God gives them a time limit. He says, it's only going to last 10 days. Then he says, be faithful even unto death and I will give you the crown of life. So he's just saying, be faithful for those 10 days and you'll be all right. And of course, that falls in line perfectly with 1 Corinthians 10, where it says in verse 13, there is no temptation taken you except what is common to man. But God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Now, some people say that, oh, God is causing the temptation. No, he isn't. He just got through saying that no temptation has seized you except what is common to man. These temptations that happen to us, they're common to everyone. And God is faithful, and what, what, because he's faithful, what will he do? He will not suffer you to be tempted beyond or above what you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape. So this is not saying that God is doing the tempting here. It says that with the temptation, God will make a way of escape. And this is misinterpreted by many people to, to, to say that God is causing the temptation. God does not cause temptation. He makes the way of escape. If he was causing the temptation and making the way of escape, he would be divided against himself. Once again, Matthew 12, verse 25, Jesus said, Jesus knew their thoughts and he said to them, every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. 
So here we see that obviously if Satan is throwing people into prison and God is breaking them out, these two kingdoms are not divided against themselves. The kingdom of Satan is against believers and the kingdom of God is for believers. Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined. So God's kingdom is not divided against itself. He does not cause temptation and then deliver you out of that temptation. No, God delivers you out of temptation that's caused by Satan. Who's tempted Jesus in the, in the wilderness? It was Satan. It wasn't God the Father who tempted Jesus. If we look at James 1, 13, it tells us, When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. So you see, God does not tempt people. That's Satan who's tempting people. No one should say, God is tempting me. God doesn't do that. He does not tempt anyone. But each one is tempted by his own evil desire, and he's dragged away and enticed. God does not cause the temptations that he delivers you from. Satan causes the temptation, and God delivers you out of it. So when you see Revelation 2.10 here, where it says, Don't be afraid of what you're about to suffer. The devil will cast you into prison. We see that the devil is the one who's in his kingdom. He's working against believers. He's throwing believers into prison. And how does he get people into prison? The government. You don't get people into prison without the help of the government. So the devil works through the government. You think I'm going overboard by saying that? Well, let's look at Acts chapter 5, starting at verse 16. Crowds gathered also from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by evil spirits, and all of them were healed. Then the high priest and all his associates, who were all members of the party of the Sadducees, Sadducees don't believe in the resurrection, they were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. The Sadducees worked alongside the government. They had the favor of the government, and they put them in the public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. So here you see the kingdom of God is not divided against itself. God did not put them in jail. God broke them out. God broke them out of jail. Satan put them in jail and God broke them out. So going back to Romans 13, where it says, Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities. There's no authority except which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Obviously, these authorities who threw the apostles in prison, who both in Revelation and in Acts and in other places in Acts, they threw them in prison. Well, Obviously, these governments were not established by God. Then God's kingdom would be divided against itself. So this is talking about the church. These are talking about authorities in the church, governing authorities in the church. And that's why Paul could say confidently that he who rebels against this authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. And we saw last week how people bring judgment on themselves. But let's look at another example. Let's look back at Acts chapter 5 again, and it tells us the story of Ananias. A certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not yours? And after it was sold, was it not in your own power? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. He died. And great fear came on all those who heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered to her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yes, for so much. So she lied too. See, it, it wasn't the fact that they didn't give all the money to the, the apostles. That wasn't the sin. The sin was that they lied. If they would have told the apostles they were holding back a certain amount of money, that, then that wouldn't have been lying, and they wouldn't have died. But they lied, and they said they told Peter, both Ananias and his wife told Peter that they sold the land for an amount they did not sell it for. 
Then Peter said unto her, How is it that you have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried your husband are at the door, and shall carry you out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. She died too. And the young men came in and found her dead, and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church, and many has heard these things. Now, if you read the end of chapter 4 leading up to this, you'll see that right before that, what we just read in chapter 5, the verses right before that, remember, uh, Acts wasn't written in chapter and verse. So this is the verses leading right up to what we just read. It said, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands and houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold. They brought the money for the land that they sold. And they laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. You notice this wasn't socialism. With socialism, everyone gets the same amount. But among the apostles, everyone got according to what they needed. And, uh, and Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, yeah, so that was the, who we know later on as being Barnabas, a Levite and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. And that's what led up to Ananias and Sapphira saying, well, aha, we'll give some of the money to the church, but we'll tell them that it was all of it. So you see here in verse 1, Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, sold a piece of property, and with his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. So here in chapter 13, consequently, though he who rebels against the authority, the authority of the church, is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. So that's exactly what happened to Ananias and Sapphira. Back in the early church there, um, they were accountable to the leaders of the church, which were Peter and the apostles. And they lied to the apostles. They lied to them. They they sold property, and they told the apostles it was all of it when it wasn't. And the reason we don't see this kind of authority in the church these days is we're not spiritually aware. We're not spiritually awake these days. Most churches are not living in the spiritual realm. They're living in the physical realm. Mental leadership. Spiritual leadership is much more powerful. For rulers hold no terror for those who do what is right, but those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from the fear and of the one in authority? Then do what is right, and he will commend you. Ananias and Sapphira could have been still alive after that. They could have just said, okay, this is part of the money, and we're holding back a certain sum. And if they would have said that, they wouldn't have been lying to the Holy Spirit. They wouldn't have been lying to Peter. Verse 4, for he is God's servant to do you good. Ananias and Sapphira were saying, we don't trust Peter in the church. We don't trust them that they're doing good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword for nothing. He is God's servant, an agent of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Well, isn't that what just happened with Ananias and Sapphira? That is, isn't it? Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also because of conscience. Once again, believers have a conscience. We, we understand if we've done something wrong, if we've done something right. Ananias and Sapphira were thinking in the back of their minds, we're screwing up here, and yet they did it anyways. And we talked about last week why this is why, also why you pay taxes. Taxes, remember, tithes are taxes. If you look up tithes, what tithes mean, they actually mean taxes. And that was a tax. In the Old Testament times, they paid tithes. They paid tithes, which are taxes to keep up the temple and to keep up the Levitical priesthood. And so they kept doing that in these early church days. They kept on paying tithes or taxes. Taxes are tithes and tithes are taxes. This is why you also pay tithes or taxes. Okay, this is talking about the church. For the authorities are God's servants. The, the government obviously isn't God's servants. They were throwing the Christians in prison. They were working on Satan's side. So these authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. And once again, the apostles did give their full time to governing. And the leadership that they set in place, they set their full time to governing. 
So you give everyone what you owe him. If you owe ta tithes or taxes, pay taxes or tithes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. So he's telling these people in the early church that, hey, these authorities, I know because I set them in, in their positions myself. I set them in authority. Paul's the one who set these people in authority. He said, listen to them. He said, don't rebel against the authorities. Those who rebel against the authorities will bring judgment on themselves. So this is all talking about church leadership. This is not talking about government. It is not talking about government. We saw how government worked against the believers. Acts chapter 12. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church. Who did King Herod? That's government, folks. That's the government. It was King Herod who arrested some who belonged to the church. Who will put the believers in prison? According to Revelation chapter 2, verse 10, Satan will put believers in prison. So it was King Herod was being used by Satan here. And, and Herod arrested some who belonged to the church intending to persecute them. And he had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. Okay, you think that was God's will for one of the leaders of his church to be put to the sword by Satan? No, that wasn't God's will. Then he, when he saw that this pleased the Jews, because the Jews were siding with Satan at this point because they were against the church, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. After arresting him, okay, so King Herod, the government, arrested Peter had him put in prison and handed him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. These are soldiers. This is government. Herod intended for him to be put on public trial after the Passover. Public trial. That's the government. This is the government. And of course, God broke him out. Peter was kept in prison, but the church was praying for him. And the angel of the Lord appeared and woke him and the chains fell off of Peter's wrists and Peter followed the angel out of the prison and he was set free from prison. See, God breaks people out of prison. God doesn't put people in prison. That's Satan who does that. Satan puts believers in prison. God doesn't put Christians in prison for being believers. That's Satan who does that. God's the one who's breaking them out. God, twice now we see stories where God broke apostles out of prison. So once again, it is just perfectly clear that this government here, uh, Romans 13, this governing authorities here, is talking about the authorities in the church. This could not, could not be talking about the governments of the world. It could not be. Everyone must have submit himself to the church's governing authorities. He's talking to the church. He's writing to the Romans in the church. And he says, for there's no authority except what God has established. He's talking about the church authorities, because we know that the authorities of the world were not established by God. The authorities that, that exist have been established by God. He's talking about church, spiritual authorities. Once again, he could not be talking about government authorities. We saw this. God was not working through the government. Satan was. Consequently, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do will bring judgment on themselves. God broke Peter out of prison. We just read in Acts chapter 12 that God broke Peter out of prison. So was God rebelling against the authority, God himself, rebelling against what he himself instituted? That's not possible, is it? Because we saw that in Matthew chapter 12 that a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. God is not divided against himself. This is talking about the authorities in the church. It cannot be talking about the authorities of the governments of this world. Thanks for watching.